What's going on, everybody? It is your boy Dylan Matthews back at it again with another hometown take. Today I'm talking about the Atlanta Hawks, and we are down to the final stretch, y'all. And I'm here to go over it, talk about it, and let y'all know what we need to do to put ourselves in the best possible position to, you know, we, we're not getting out of the plane, y'all. I'm sorry, but that's just seeming like the harsh reality. I think it's probably also mathematically impossible, but we'll go over it. But what we need to do to put ourselves in the best possible situation to not only, you know, remain in the plane, which I'm pretty sure we're going to do that, but to also, you know, hopefully get out of the plane and make the actual, actual playoffs, you know, or play a four game series and not every game is just do or two, just two do or die games. So we'll go over it. But before I do that, make sure you guys like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel. Check out the first link in my description box to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel, help fuel the Atlanta Hawks with some more wins. So let's get into it, guys, because the Hawks need some wins. They need them bad. And our schedule isn't too bad, but we're going to not only go over the Atlanta Hawks schedule, we're going to go over the teams above us, i.e. the Brooklyn Nets and the Charlotte Hornets, who are now eighth after beating the Brooklyn Nets last night with Kyrie. We're going to go over their remaining schedules as well and just check out the standards because it's coming down to the nitty gritty, y'all. So... Let's hop on Williams PN now. So obviously we play the Indiana Pacers tonight. That's a game we need to win. Not only should win, but need to win. We're at 37 and 37. And also quickly, shout out to the Hawks for beating the Warriors um, last Friday. 121 to 110. You know, even though, yes, they didn't have Steph. It was a good game because Clay went off. He had, what, 37 points, I think it was. Let me check out the box score real quick while I got up. Clay had 37, hit nine, nine three-pointers. He was nine to 16. Jordan Poole had 24, Gary Payton the th uh, third had 14, but everybody else was just held to single digits. Andrew, Andrew Wiggins only had nine. Um, so we we're pretty much everybody to neutralize everybody else. So that was good. Trey Young obviously had a great game. He had his, I believe, 18th it was, which leads the NBA. 33 plus and 10 plus assist game. He had 33 and 15, hit four threes, was four nine, 12 and 20 from the field. Very efficient. All the score, uh, starters got into double figures. Daniel Gallinari had 25, hit two threes. DeAndre Hunter had 11. Um, Clint Capella had 19 and 13. Great game from him. Quiver Hurd even had 20. He had five threes, seven to 17 from the field. So great games by everybody all around. Um, unfortunately, Bogey couldn't play because his knee soreness. Um, we also obviously didn't have uh, John Collins, who probably won't have until the uh, season uh, or the end of the regular season. But how we're gonna get into it, but. Obviously, the game before that, we got blown out by the freaking Pistons. We got to stop losing to these teams we're supposed to beat. And if we would beat these teams they're supposed to beat, i.e. the Pistons, um, who else? The whatever, all these all the, the all these other bad teams are losing to, the Pelicans, the Hornets when we lost to them. If we stop losing to these bad freaking teams, we wouldn't be in this position. Maybe we'd be in the position to skip the playing all around. But let's go ahead and get into that right now. So we're at 37 and 37, still 10th in the East. But we still have, um, we still got time, and we still have enough games left to where we can catch up to these other teams. So right now we are actually, um, right now we are a game and a half behind the Brooklyn Nets and the Charlotte Hornets for eighth place in the East. Now seventh is pretty much out of reach. Um, we are four games back behind the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, we're nine and a half games out of first. They're five and a half games out of first. So that puts us obviously do the math. Four games out of seventh place in the East. They're at 41 and 33. We're obviously 37 and 37. So not impossible, but with only, how many games we got left? With only three, four, five, six, seven, eight games left, you know, they're gonna, we're pretty much gonna have to win all our games and they're gonna have to lose all their games. So there you go. Um, Cause yeah, anywho. So seventh is out of the question pretty much it seems like. So we're trying to get to that eighth seed where we only have to win one game to get into the playoffs. Cause if we get into the eighth seed, we win the seven eighth matchup between say the Cavaliers, then we will become the seventh seed and we would then obviously play the two seed which is all over the place right now. If you look at the conference standings, Miami is technically second, but they're tied for the Boston Celtics uh, in first place. But Boston just has a tiebreaker with them. The East is real crazy right now. Only a, only a half game separates one from four right now. That's wild. But sticking to down below, because that's where we are. 
like I said, we're a game and a half away from that AC between Brooklyn and Charlotte. We do play a game against the Nets, which is gonna be huge. Can't even describe how huge that is. The good news for us though is the Charlotte Hornets and the Brooklyn Nets both have pretty tough schedules remaining. So first, let's go through the rest of the games that we have on the schedule. Obviously, like I said, we have the uh, Indiana Pacers tonight. We do not play any more games with the Charlotte Hornets though, so that kind of sucks. But we got the Pacers tonight, winnable game. We should win. Then on Wednesday, we have the Thunder, winnable game, should win. Big game against the Cavs, you know, if we do want to, you know, have that outside chance of getting to the seventh seed, this is obviously, obviously, obviously a game we need to win and will win because if we don't win that game, then we're definitely not going to make the seventh seed. We'll be mathematically probably out by that time, depending on how they play. So Cavaliers, big game, but a game we can win. Um, so that'll close out the month of March. Then April, April 2nd, we have the Brooklyn Nets. Huge game, obviously. Playoff seeding implications, big implications for that game. So April 2nd, we have the Brooklyn Nets. So right now, two winnable games so far. Um, two actually games we should win, but two also winnable games. But Cleveland and Brooklyn will both be tough games. And that Brooklyn Nets game, in case you're wondering, is at home. So we will be in Atlanta for that game. Then we got the Hawks um, taking on the Raptors. That is going to be in Toronto. Raptors have kind of had our... We did beat them one time, but I think they've got two out of uh, three against us. So there you go. We have the Wizards. That's a winnable game. We've beaten the Wizards before. So that should be a game hopefully we can win. Um, we have the Heat. The Heat have been going down. Man, ever since the Jimmy Butler and Eric Spolster and Udonis Haslam almost fought it out to the death. So they've been trailing, you know, you can say what you want about maybe they're tanking, whatever, whatever. I don't care. They can take against us. They can lose because we need these dubs. So I don't care what the Heat got going on. But we got the Heat in our second to last game of the regular season on April 8th. And to close out the year, we have the Houston Rockets on April 10th. Now, again, the Wizards game, game we should win. Heat is a winnable game. Every game is a winnable game for the Hawks. We've beaten the the Warriors, the Suns, the Bucks. We've beaten all these high profile teams, all these championship uh, caliber teams. So we can beat any team in the league, it's just will we. So there you go. And then we got the Rockets. That is a game we should win. So if you're going by games that we should win, we should beat the Pacers to, uh, tonight. We should beat the Thunder on Wednesday. If you wanna, we can call Cavaliers a toss up. We can call the Brooklyn Nets a toss up. We can call the Raptors a toss up. We should beat the Wizards and we should beat the Rockets. So four of our four out of our next eight games are games that we should win. We should win four out of the next eight games. Now, we can beat the Cavaliers, perfectly capable of beating the Cavaliers, and that Cavaliers game is at home. So we've been very good on our home floor lately, so we should win that game. So just because of the fact that's a home game, we should win that game. Now, the Hawks and the Thunder, uh, I mean, not the Hawks, the Pacers in the Thunder game is on the road, but still, those are lesser teams you should beat anyway. The Hawks, the Cavs game, and the Brooklyn Nets game, both at home. So those are games, again, we should win because they're on our home floor. We've been good on our home floor, but you know, KD and Kyrie, ugh, nasty. The, like I said, we're playing in Toronto. Then we got the Wizards at home, Heat on the road, and then the Rockets on the road as well. So let's go ahead and move on. So we should at least, at minimum, at minimum, win four out of our last eight games. Now, if we do that, we're probably gonna stay 10. So that's not good. We're gonna have to beat the Cavaliers. We're gonna have to beat the Brooklyn Nets, obviously. We're gonna have to beat the Heat. So we gotta, we gotta step up, y'all. You know, the, the, the schedule is pretty nice, but it ain't cupcakes and rainbows. The rest of the way we got some games that we need have to have to win we can't be ducking around no more so that's our schedule let's check out the brooklyn net schedule actually let's check out the well yeah we'll check out the net schedule first because they are right above us so let's check out their schedule real quick i gotta get to it obviously but yeah the hawks we can't we can't do no more ducking around we've been playing around too much losing to these teams we have no business losing to and it's just been the inconsistency that has killed us this year. So let's check out the Brooklyn Nets remaining schedule. They have a pretty tough remaining schedule. Now, they do have the Pistons tomorrow. They should win that game. They got the Bucks on Thursday, so that game could go either way. 
Bucks are fighting for that number one seed. They're only a half game out from it, so they got stuff to play for as well. Then the rest of the games, obviously they have us on April the 2nd. Then they have the Rockets. That's a winnable game for them. The Knicks, that's a winnable game for them. But, you know, this Knicks, you know, that rivalry could be, you know, could cause some issues for the, for the Nets. And they got the Cavs. That'll be a tough game for them. And then they got the Pacers. So the Nets actually have a kind of easy schedule, too. Um, I mean, considering with the KD and Kyrie, these are all games that they can win. You know, hopefully just not us, though. But the Bucks could be a tough game. The Knicks could be a tough game. Cavaliers um, could be a tough game as well. And obviously the Hawks, you know, we ain't going to go down easy to them. So that'll be a tough game as well. So they got some tough games, too. But they're kind of right on par with us as far as uh, strength of schedule goes. Now, let's check out the Charlotte Hornets. I know they do have a more daunting schedule, I believe but the Hornets have been playing pretty well as of late they got the Nuggets tonight that'll be a tough game Nuggets got stuff to play for they got the Knicks um which they should beat the Knicks but you know the Knicks are a nice little scrappy team we'll see they got the 76ers that'll be a tough game 76ers are going for that number one seed that'll be tough they have the Heat the Heat are going for that number one seed that'll be tough they got the Magic they should win that game the Bulls are still fighting as well they're not too far away from the number one seed and then they got the Wizards as well so they have a pretty tough schedule so I'm feeling like we could at least at least and this is what I've been saying for the past couple of weeks now we need to at least be ninth, so we can at least if we're gonna have to play two do or die games we can at least host the first one so we'll see but the Hornets do have a pretty tough schedule coming up and I mean we put the we put ourselves in this situation guys so we're gonna have to get ourselves out we're gonna have to find a way to win these tough games against the Cavaliers against the Heat against the Brooklyn Nets and we're gonna have to be consistent for these last eight games and beat the teams that we're supposed to beat and you know we've already done pretty well against the higher ranked team and like I said championship caliber teams that we've played this year so hopefully we can keep that up as well but it's gonna be a dog fight these last eight games because we really to realistically like get to maybe the seventh seed that's the seventh. that's not even avoiding the playing round that's you know you only you're you only got to win one game and that one game you're hosting so to get to the seventh seed and surpass the Cavaliers we probably need to go like seven and one and if not undefeated obviously like undefeated would help us a lot but we realistically to have like a real chance to get to that seven seed, we probably need to go seven and one, guys, which I hate to say it, but the way this team has been inconsistent this year, like I said, lose one, win one, win two, lose three. And I mean, our record shows we're a 500 team. 500 teams are teams that are inconsistent, but you know, good enough to, you know, be right there. We're that team, we're inconsistent. We're a good team and we can get up for the good teams, but we sometimes play down to, to the competition of our bad teams. And that's been our fatal flaw this year. Also, injuries haven't helped, of course, but these last eight games, we're gonna have to suck it up, buttercups, and we're gonna have to win these last eight games. Like I said, seven and one is realistic to get to that seven seed. But in my heart of heart and guts of guts, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna get up there just because this team hasn't shown me they can be consistent enough to rail off eight straight games. Now, we have gone on two separate seven game winning streaks, so anything is possible. And now that you know they may have a little more motivation to get up for these games because they know where they're at playoff wise and they know what they have to do to get in a better playoff seating, they may get up for them and they may come out with a little more sense of urgency, but they haven't shown me that yet until I start seeing that sense of urgency more consistently on a night in, night out basis. I'm not convinced this team is going to get higher than the 9th seed, but I do think we will end up at the 9th seed. That's my prediction right now. I hope the Atlanta Hawks prove me wrong. I really do because the worst case scenario, and this could very well be a scenario, the worst case scenario right now in the scenario that's in play is that we are the 10th seed that has to go up against the 9th seeded Brooklyn Nets in Brooklyn in a do or die game. Going up against... Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, don't even think about Ben Simmons because I don't even know what he got going on. But Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant is far, by far enough to take us out easily. That is the worst case scenario. Having to go to Brooklyn in a do or die game to play the Nets. That I do not want because the writing on the wall is there and that means we get to the play in, but we don't make it past one game. So we have one postseason. We don't want that, especially after what happened last year. So we'll see. I laid out all the schedules. I laid out the standings. We know what we got to do. 
We're shooting for seven and one. We're shooting for eight and no. But if we get to seven and if we go on this last stretch seven and one, which we can do, then we'll be in a probably a very very good spot. So we'll see, guys. But let me know how you're feeling in the comments down below. Um, just one more quick nugget: if this happens to where we play the Nets in a 9-10 game and we're the 10 seed and we have to go to Brooklyn and we lose, there are going to be a lot of changes this offseason. I'm going to go ahead and say that now. John Collins might get traded. Click Capella might get traded. I don't know. I just know everybody that's not named Trey Young is not safe. That's what I can tell you. And honestly, from what I've seen from this season, injuries have done us in, yes, but there have been plenty of winnable games, games that we've had a big lead blew it and end up losing. Games that we've been right there, have a fourth quarter, fourth quarter meltdown or have a meltdown on one quarter that just do us in. And we can't have that. I'm at the position now and I'm having the feeling now that we just go ahead, need to go ahead and get that second star. Need to get somebody beside Trey Young, whether it's down in the low post or at the three or at the two in the backcourt with Trey Young that can go get it every night. We need that big time Robin next to Trey Young being Batman. We need that dude who is gonna bring it every night just like Trey Young is. A dude who can give us uh, at least 20 points a night, at least 20 points every single night next to Trey Young. I'm at the belief that we need that because there have been too many games where if Trey Young's not playing or Trey Young has an off night, then we lose. There have been games, you know, i.e. the Grizzlies, where Trey Young isn't playing and we've won the game. We can pull it off, but, and I like Bogey coming off the bench, but he might have to be a part of a trade package because We've just been too inconsistent when Trey Young has an off night. Now, when Trey Young does his thing, we're 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 fine. But there's been too many nights where Trey Young has an off night or Trey Young doesn't play and we aren't winning games. So I think we need to get that secondary go-to guy. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know what you think the Hawks are gonna finish in this postseason race. Like I said, I'm thinking ninth, but hopefully I'm wrong. But we got a lot of work to do if we're gonna be higher than that. But guys, again, like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel, check out the link above to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel. And until I talk to you guys next time, stay true to Atlanta, believe in Atlanta, go Hawks. Mm -hmm.